Should climbers weight train? Will it make you better at climbing or you just gain mass and feel all heavy? Will it make you more prone to overuse injuries or will the added strength help prevent you from getting injured? Shouldn't you be spending your time climbing and not just lifting weights? But then how are you gonna get stronger? Just like running, this is a hotly debated and often misunderstood topic in the climbing community. So in this video, we're gonna present the top three reasons for and against weight training for climbers. And we're gonna base those reasons on what? Um, an article on BuzzFeed? <laughs> no. A blog post? No. A comment on Facebook that got 100 likes? No, it's science. We're basing our reasons on science, like we do for literally every one of our videos. How have you not gotten that yet? Mm -hmm. well, I saw this article on Reddit. Don't, seriously? <laughs> After this video, you'll have all the info you need to decide for yourself whether or not weight training is appropriate for you. All right, the first reason against weight training for climbers is that it is often not specific for climbing. Don't get me wrong, weight training definitely can be effective, specific training for climbing, but only if done right. And therein lies the problem. Most people don't have the training, guidance, or hours and hours of free time for research to do it right. Basically, most people don't know how to weight train in a way that will specifically help them with climbing. This will result in that person experiencing little to no gains in performance or may even experience a worsening of their climbing performance as they're allocating their resources inappropriately. The only specificity I need is looking specifically incredible. Specificity in weight training is very important. For example, the energy system that you should be targeting with your weight training should reflect the style of climbing you do. Understanding that if you're a boulderer working on problems that last only a few moves, you should be doing higher resistance, lower repetition movements. On the other hand, if you're a sport climber working on a long route, your weight training should be tailored to more endurance-based weight training. If you're not incorporating that specificity into your program, you're training the incorrect energy systems and it will not help your climbing performance. Another issue with this is not picking weight training exercises that specifically help you with your climbing. I see a lot of climber bros doing bicep curls with heavy weights, like why? Why are you independently training this muscle when it works in conjunction with so many other muscle groups while climbing? You're better off doing an like, inverted row exercise which uses your body weight and places you in a position to specifically train the correct muscle groups for climbing. Doing bicep curls in isolation, on the other hand, may cause an overuse injury or will simply take away from your climbing performance because now you wrecked your biceps and can't do your cave training effectively which reduces your climbing performance. Speaking of an overuse injury, this brings us to our second reason against weight training and climbing. It can be risky. So weight training is designed to progressively overload your tissue and force it to create a new adaptation. If you don't know what you're doing with weight training, you can end up with an overuse injury, an injury due to improper form and or even a too stoked too quick injury, i.e. you're increasing your weights far too quickly and end up damaging or hurting your tissue. I too like to live dangerously. So let's look back at that bicep curl we mentioned, as this is a good example of two ways in which we can cause ourselves an overuse injury. One, you're simply adding to the force that this muscle group has to tolerate with the combination of weight training and climbing. And two, you're reducing the rest and recovery time for that muscle group. Weighted pull-ups is another example. Weighted pull-ups are a common training tool for climbers, but as we mentioned, if you're not adjusting your climbing routine, you're placing a high amount of strain or stress to your shoulders and elbows and not allowing adequate recovery or rest time. Weight training is meant to supplement and add to your climbing. And if you get hurt from your weight training and you can't climb as a result, you're going in the wrong direction. This brings us to our third and final reason against weight training and climbing, time. All right, so our third, and to me the most important aspect against weight training and climbing is simple. It's time. The biggest gripe I often have with weight training and climbing is that people often spend too much time weight training and not enough time climbing. After all, the best 
training you can do for climbing is climbing. 75 to 80% of your available training time should be dedicated to climbing. You can fill the other 20 to 25% with training for climbing or other activities, but if you want to get better at climbing, you need to climb. Warm up for America. Max effort. Cool down. That didn't take much time at all. All right, so let's talk about another really important aspect of this and that too much weight training can also take up valuable rest and recovery time. This means that you may not be at your optimum performance level, which means you won't be able to push the limits of your climbing. You may not be able to put in max effort to your climbing because you're doing too much weight training, which means you're likely not going to advance in your climbing. All right, the final important aspect we're gonna discuss with time in relation to weight training is that our bodies only have a certain capacity for adaptation. The more modes of training that you have, the harder it is for your body to get great at any one of those modes. The fewer that you incorporate, the better you'll become at it. So if you're incorporating too much and too many different styles of weight training, then your body is being robbed of that adaptation time specifically for climbing. So in summary, your time is valuable and it needs to be invested properly if you want to climb harder. If your weight training is not specific, if it's putting you at risk for an injury, if it's taking away from your rest and recovery time, then you're not going to improve at climbing, you're only slowing down your progress. Now, onto the reasons for weight training. The first reason, is that you're gonna improve your strength, which is gonna help you pull harder, build body awareness, and learn to control tension. And it won't make you bulk out either. If I pulled any harder, there wouldn't be any climbs left. Okay, I have to start with the last thing I said. Yes, weight training won't necessarily bulk you out. I mean, if you do it right, that is. This is a universal issue and misunderstanding. There's a significant difference between using weight training for strength and weight training for hypertrophy. Hypertrophy training will make you huge. Example, cyclists, huge legs. What are they doing? Moderate to sometimes high intensities with super high volume. Strength training on the other hand, high intensity, but lower volume and low repetition. You can get stronger and not add weight. It's just about knowing that difference. Okay, so back to the other benefits. I like to look at the deadlift, for example. This is an exercise when done appropriately is amazing. It's a good example of body awareness and tension. This exercise really forces you to engage your scapular retractors, your core, your glutes, your hamstrings, all with just one movement. A lot of this is a result of learning how to control all the tension between those muscle groups we mentioned when performing the lift. It'll make you more efficient without actually getting heavier. So just take a second and think about how being able to control all that tension can help you with climbing. So reason number two for weight training is the dual positive effect on your mental and physical health. So the research about mental health components tune into the distraction and the mastery hypothesis. It suggests that exercise provides us like a mental timeout from worrying, stressful, or negative thoughts. The mastery hypothesis suggests that completing an important or effortful task brings about a feeling of mastery which can elevate mood. Think about it, doesn't hitting a new PR on your weight training make you feel great, feel accomplished, feel like you're the toughest mother In addition, but kind of the opposite of that, like climbing 100% of the time can be unhealthy in its own manner. It can lead to your like fun hobby feeling like your job while you're just doing one thing 100% of the time can lead to burnout. It can also make those normal like accomplishments and those good feelings you have feel more like you just completed a task, not that you just did something super fun. So complementing your climbing training with some weight training can be a much needed reprieve and can give you that nice mental boost. Is it possible to be better than perfect? 
Another beautiful component of weight training is the physical health benefit. The physical benefits of exercise include reduction in blood pressure, weight loss, prevention of chronic diseases, but even cooler than that, Weight training, especially large muscle groups, will boost anabolic hormones such as testosterone and growth hormones. Having an increased bioavailability of these two hormones means that there is the potential to trigger additional building of tissue throughout your whole body or specifically where there's damage. This can mean faster healing and quicker recovery times. Bam! Weight training is good for you mentally and physically. All right, so what else though? The final aspect we're gonna talk about is how weight training can increase stability throughout your body, which can lead to decreased injuries. All right, so reason number three is that increasing stability equals decreasing injuries. Now, this is a really important final topic because earlier we discussed how weight training can cause injuries. If you do not have good training and education on weight training, as we mentioned, it can be risky. But, that's a big but, if you do it correctly, you can actually prevent injuries. The only injury I've ever had is that one time I got a flapper in the gym on my project. I was so close to getting it too. So one easy example I like to look at is with our shoulders. We oftentimes become hyper-focused on the strength training of our hands and forearms that we often forget about the importance of strong shoulders. In fact, I sometimes see more shoulder injuries than I do pulley injuries in my practice. They've even shown research that an imbalance in our external to our internal strength of our shoulder can lead to injuries of the shoulder due to this imbalance. This is extremely common in overhead athletes as it causes a biomechanical deficit which could simply be avoided with proper weight training. If you can avoid an injury, you can continue to climb. If you can continue to climb, you'll get better at climbing. So doing climbing specific weight training to prevent injuries can enhance your climbing. In summary, weight training can help you climb better. It can keep you on the wall rather than the injured reserve. It can boost your healing and boost your mental health and will help you pull harder by building more tension and learning more body awareness. So if you haven't figured it out yet, you would know that I do love weight training. Can't you tell? Like that. But I don't do a ton of it, can't you tell? <laughs> Here are my recommendations for weight training and climbing. Number one, do some weight training, but keep your focus on climbing. 75 to 80% of your time should be climbing, 20 to 25% training for climbing. Number two, do large muscle groups to optimize your time and gain the hormonal benefits. This may be deadlifts, squats, pull-ups, or more. Number three, Focus on the outcome of the strength training rather than the sweat, fatigue, or feeling gassed at the end. Number four, do some research or find a climbing coach and find out what style of training you should be doing based upon your style of climbing. This can also be helpful to prevent yourself from making a mistake with your training, which can cause an injury. I personally think that the Power Company podcast and Steve Bechtel at Climbstrong are good resources as well. Number five, there really isn't one perfect way to train. Everyone's training may look a little bit different based on that individual. It's important to write down the results of your training. That way you can tell if that training program is really working for you. And it's also important to finish that training program. That way you knew if the results were effective or not. And that's it. I hope that this will help you in your journey and give you the information you need to figure out if weight training is appropriate for you. Until next time, weight train, don't weight train. Climb, send, repeat. Should climbers weight train? Will that make you better at climbing? Mm. Or will you just gain mass and feel all heavy? <laughs> will it make you more prone to overuse injuries? Or will it add a strength help benefit you from getting injured? Shouldn't you be spending your time climbing? You should say you're shy, Jason. <laughs> If you want, like and subscribe, <laughs> but they like, don't have to, it's fine. <laughs> Hell yeah, brother. Hell yeah, brother. And potentially not allowing adequate rest or recovery. Wow, I like, <laughs> once I got adequate, I like, <laughs> couldn't, I couldn't talk. You can recover. I couldn't recover. <laughs> Climbing is a skilled sport, guys. Let's not, uh, I don't wanna say guys, it's sexist. <laughs> oh my god. People. Oh, <laughs> needed that. You, Emil, 
Me? You. Can get stronger and not add weight. What? But you probably should. <laughs> It allows you to lift more weight, more efficiently, efficiently, <laughs> when I started to say effective and changed it. A lot of those improvements are because the weight, what am I? Improvements. <laughs> those improvements. The final reason that we're going to discuss is that weight training can increase, I said discuss. <laughs> you said discuss. I saw you start to smile too, I was like, damn it, it was noticeable. <laughs> you're gonna improvement. Strength. You're gonna get improvements. <laughs> we're gonna discuss. Gonna, we're gonna discuss the improvements you're gonna make. Got a question? Leave a comment, but only if you like and subscribe first publicly. <laughs> <laughs>